he had the group was called Rock On Crew and so forth, you know. Uh, we were there doing our thing for a little bit, you know. I bought some equipment out of um, Fairview Heights, you know, that, that mall up there. So I bought yeah. some equipment there. And, you know, we used to do little parties and so forth and go around, you know, doing the little DJing and so, and so forth, you know, pull a little crowd, make a little extra money on the side. You know, so it's, it, it was always good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, what I'm saying that you were right there in the six one eight. You you were uh, you had a group out. You're doing your thing, but then you went uh, all the way up to California. It was a Riverside, I believe. Um, tell everybody what happened. Yeah, when you went up to Riverside, California. Yeah, I then later on I got stationed um, to March Air Force Base in Riverside back in 1984. It was like June of '84. And when I got there, uh, I met Mr. Mix in the bowling alley and so forth. Uh, and then he told me it was another guy on the base that, you know, was, you know, doing hip-hop, who liked hip-hop also. So, you know, we kind of hooked up. And, you know, we went to, to Mix's room because he had the turntables and he had the 808 drum machine in there. And, you know, we started writing rhymes and stuff like that and, you know, doing different things. And that's how Two Live Crew formed back in 1984, uh, March Air Force Base. And then obviously from there, um, you know, you guys put out records like What I Like. I played a a little chunk of that at the beginning. Um, Guy down in Miami, Florida named Luther Campbell heard your music, and he was blown away. Um, he brought you guys down there. My question though, yeah, about we, that, we yeah. put, like, um, the first single we recorded was in um, in Claremont, um, California, and that was, like, um, November, December of 84. Then we went to McCola Records and started our own record label in McCola basically distributed uh, our label, which was Fresh Beat Records. You know what I'm saying? Because for $500, they'll press up your records and start putting them out, and then after a while, you know, they'll take over pressing and so forth, you know? So we put out, you know, like two singles, you know? So we, you know, we went to Miami in 85 and so forth, Met Luther Campbell, you know, because he brought us down to do some shows and so forth. And after that, you know, we had a, a friendship going, you know. So once we got out of the military, once I got out of the military in 86, because Mix was already out before me, we decided um, to come to Miami because it was either stay in L.A. because, you know, we... We went to Jerry Heller and so forth. You know, Don McMillan sent us to to Jerry Heller, you know, for management and so forth. And but you know, we decided to to move to Miami and start something different. So in '86, I recorded um, "Throw the D" and so forth, and that's what started Luke Skywalker Records. You know, so, and then everything else from then on is history. Yeah, yeah. And you guys, you know, when you were making your music in Cali, uh, you definitely weren't explicit like you were down in Miami. What what was the deciding factor for you guys to start talking about pussy and things of that nature? Well, when we were in Cali, we were more hip-hop. And when we went to Miami, you know, we seen, you know, the the flavor, the Caribbean flavor, because, you know, I was born in Trinidad and so forth. And, you know, they had that Caribbean flavor, you know, the melting pot, the women, and everything, you know. So, basically, you know, they had a dance down there that they were doing, like, late 85, called Throw the D, you know. So, uh, what I did, I just decided to to write it up and so forth, told Mix about it. And 
I wrote this song on the way back to to Riverside, to California, on a red eye um, from Miami back. You know, it took me like 30 minutes to write that and and another 20 or 30 minutes to write um, Ghetto Bass and so forth. And then we incorporated the, um, the drummer's beat, which they were doing the dance to, and and also Mr. Mix used to, you know, listen to a lot of um, joke records while we were <laughs> in the military, so we incorporated that in, into the music also. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications, like, comment, share, also go over to UGSForLife.com, download the entire archive, and check out new episodes on Apple Podcasts and Blog Talk Radio.